everybody, it's Rob Williams from the Outer Rim Rookie and the Generation X Wing Podcast. Welcome back. It's another show. This is going to be a short one because not a lot's going on. This is kind of my um, intermission, possibly. It's uh, I'm in between worlds right now. I just want to do a quick little update on how things are going with the uh, costume building. And it's not really going very fast because I've got a lot of things happening in the midst. But before that, I want to show you a couple things that I've just recently purchased or have traded for or just come across my doorstep. First of all, you may be noticing the sweater here. I'm not typically wearing something that's, you know, 501st or Star Wars-y, but, ah, but if you're a Mandalorian fan, you may recognize this a little bit. I, I got to talk about this sweater because um, this has become the rage in our Outer Rim Garrison and uh, Wasuro Clan, the Mando Mercs, and Rebel Legion. This sweater we got on Amazon, we were watching, I believe it was episode four, episode three or four of The Mandalorian, and we saw Amon Calamari wearing a, a fisherman's sweater. And man, we were just like, that looks really cool. And knowing Terry's building this Mon Calamari and it looks fantastic, I made, I made a little joke saying, hey, you gotta get the sweater for the fisherman in that episode. And all of a sudden, we were just talking like, you know, that's a nice sweater. It's a green one. We got it on Amazon. They sold out of the green just like earlier today or yesterday. It was on sale and a bunch of us, I think, I swear like 10 or 11 of us got the sweater, uh, whether it's green or blue. I know Steve Three had a red or a black and white one. We were just uh, really excited about this. This is our version of Wilro Hood, and uh, it is nearly identical to the one that that Mon Calamari was wearing in The Mandalorian. So we just kind of had a little fun with it. So uh, I'll put a link below of where I found it, and maybe you want to purchase your own sweater. This was like 40 bucks Canadian, but we got it on sale for like 28 29 dollars. That's pretty damn good. I really love this. It's warm, it's, it's cozy, it feels good, no itching whatsoever. And you know, if you're one of those guys who have a Mon Calamari costume, just put this on, put a little, you know, fisherman outfit on, you're set to go for the next con, whatever that is, like 2024 20, or something. Other small things that I got, I was able to trade some coins and patches over the last little while. I was waiting till after the US election uh, so I wouldn't, I already lost two coins in the mail coming to me and it's very frustrating when you lose coins that you traded for. So I thought I'd take a break from it and then wait till the election's over when I can actually start trading things in the mail starts moving a little faster and just before Christmas too. So I was able to trade for a cool little holiday patch, which I'll be putting that on the shirt and the Swedish Nian Nun. If you haven't checked out his Instagram, the Swedish knee and none, this perfect, absolutely perfect. I love this patch. It's going to go right on my uh, BDU and uh, got to love a Swedish knee and none. So got to love any knee and none really, don't you? So thank you very much, Swedish knee and none for the patch, for the trade. Really appreciate it. Love it. I'm also looking for a Nian Nun coin. I hear there's one that's been out there for a couple of years now for the Rebel Legion. So I'm looking for it. It's even got a signature by, uh, by Quinn. So my Quinn, I gotta get my hands on that too. Also, I got some cool stickers. I always like little stickers. This is from Healy Made. There's the, the advertisement there. Um, there's a set of four and there's a set of individual ones. I already put them on my box along with some other stickers I purchased from Tee Public with a the uh, Nian Nun and um, my own TB55077 Outer Rim Rookie logo. I got a whole bunch of stuff. I decided to decorate my case. If I'm not trooping right now, it's kind of what I do. I just start trying to find things to do if, you know, trying to avoid work some days. <laughs> so let's get into the actual costume. I'm still waiting for the flight suit to come. I believe it's from Germany or Sweden. Um, I purchased a B-Wing pilot flight suit and that's the one that I think most people are agreeing that fits all the requirements for a, for a good Neon Nun original trilogy costume. Uh, be careful, there might be some edits. Uh, for example, I had to request some changes into things like the flap that goes across the neck. 
I had to make sure that the pockets, oops, the other side, I had to make sure that the pockets were, were done properly, the pockets on the, the thigh, the leg, all that stuff. You really have to check before you just go out and purchase. Don't get too excited. And, and trust me, this is a guy who gets super excited. I, I just like, oh, that's it. Bye, 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 bye. And I've got the re poor Reese carded figures to prove my impatience. So I took some time when you're dropping a lot of coin on stuff like this, you need to take the time and check to see if everything fits. Because if you're not comfortable with your sewing skills or your building skills, you really, really need to make sure that everything fits. Because of the advice from Steve three, I purchased the flight suit bigger and we can always take it in. It's harder to, <laughs> to let it out when you don't have the materials, right? So we'll take it in if it's too big and I feel pretty safe that that was a good choice. So really measure the parts of your body, the shoulder, the arm. We'll get more into that when the flight suit comes. The CRL is your guide to what's expected in your costume. What the shoulders should look like, what the legs should look like, what the gaiters, the vest, all that stuff. Whatever costume you're building, there's most likely a CRL in there. Keep an eye out for these things. Communicate on the boards. Go to the Rebel Legion board, the 501st board, whatever board you're going to. Talk to people. You need to talk to people and get their advice. Don't be afraid to ask questions. And like I said, make a CRL. This is mine right here, full of information, very useful. One more piece of advice before I talk about the items that uh, I have collected so far for the costume. This is advice from my buddy Steve Hosnose, Lewis out in Victoria. You've probably seen him on the show in the past. Um, fantastic guy, TIE fighter pilot. Remove your batteries from your pack, especially those people who haven't been tubing for a while. You know what I'm talking about. It starts to corrode. I, I just recently found some old stuff in a box and the batteries start corroding after about 10, 20 years. But sometimes it just takes 10, 12 months, sometimes just a couple weeks. Remove the battery from your pack. It's just nice and safe. I did that earlier on, so I just wanted to take this out from my uh, voice box. It's a smart idea during this COVID time. It's, uh, it'll just save you a lot of trouble because who knows where this might leak. It might get onto your armor, it might get onto some parts, it might get onto some electronic parts. So just a little tip, remove those batteries. Go back into your kit right now and start removing some batteries until you can get back to trooping. Okay, next. Now my head, my mask is not done yet. I was talking to Terry real quick. I don't want to bother him. I don't want to hassle him. So I was just like, how are things going? And he says he's, he was just at this point of the, of the mask and it was just like, ooh, I can hardly wait. So since the last time I did a video, I purchased some new items that will be very useful for building my Nian Nun costume uh, with the help of some friends who are near some fabric stores. So again, Steve Three, my co-host of the Generation X-Men podcast, he was able to hook me up with some buckles. This buckle here is for the uh, pilot's belt. So Nian Nun has a belt that goes around his waist with a white webbing. And this here is a two inch buckle. I love that sound, I love that click. Steve was also able to grab me some one inch parachute buckles. These ones will go on the gaiters. The gaiters are the part that goes around the shin. It's weird because if you see pictures of the gaiters, they're just kind of sitting there. I guess they were meant to attach to a um, another webbing that goes down the leg or so for the pilots, the regular B-wing pilots. So that's what these are for. Um, they're attached to the gaiters. You can buy these buckles. They're not that hard to find. These ones are pretty simple. For me in here in Vancouver, uh, we were able to go to Fabricland or there's some other simple, um, there's some other fabric stores around that sell these buckles. Bring a ruler, bring measuring tape, bring something to make sure you have the right size of buckles. So again, a two inch buckle, parachute clip, and two one inch parachute clips. This one's for the gator, this one's for the belt. Was able to get a hold of some webbing again. Thank you, Steve. I got one inch webbing here, just a whole bunch of it. You can never have too much webbing. You're gonna need it. You're gonna need it for something, maybe for your next costume. Got some one and a half inch webbing and I got some two inch webbing. There you go. So one inch, one and a half inch, two inch. This is most likely for the belt. I can't remember the top of my head what the other ones are for. Um, oh yeah, for the belt again, it was, there was little, little containers. They're almost like little silver bullets that go, are attached to your belt. 
Um, I've also purchased that through the same company that was selling me the, um, the flight suit. So I thought, well, he's already made it. I may as well buy a couple, throw it in there. But you'll find a lot of people that will make these little greeblies um, and uh, parts for your belt. So it might be useful. You can make it yourself, obviously. I'm not that talented, but uh, you can never... Etsy, I know Panda Props, uh, I'm going to shout out Terry here. Panda Props does make a lot of these different little greeblies that you don't even think of for Stormtroopers, for the comm pads, for just the simplest little things. You never know. Check out Panda Props mm, costumes. <laughs> uh, link, all links over below and you can find some really cool stuff. And finally, I was able to get some fabric. This I got from Overseas Fabrics in Abbotsford. It's worth the drive. They have so much. The, those guys are so knowledgeable. The prices are good. And you might get a nice little trip out to Abbotsford. Uh, this is a lot. I bought a lot of this fabric. I can't remember. Maybe like meter or two meter, square meters. Meter by meters. Two, I think it's two by two meters. I bought a lot. I bought too much on purpose because I know I'm going to screw up. But this is duck cloth. Um, it's kind of a, a beige sort of feel to it. Now, earlier on, if you follow me on Facebook, at Outer Rim Rookie on Facebook, plug, you probably noticed that I also bought some other sort of fabric. It's a faux leather fabric for the gators. A much darker brown. This stuff right here. It's really cool to that. It's a cool brown vinyl. Definitely a lot darker. I was really excited because I, I like the color. In my mind, I was like, this color fits better than that one. I like the looks of this. But just because you like it, it doesn't mean that it fits. You see, don't get your advice from action figures because that's kind of what I was doing. Granted, it's really hard to see what colors that Nian's wearing in the movie, the actual Return of the Jedi movie, because when he's in the cockpit, it's only waist up. And in the background, we see Lando and Han having a little talk about the Falcon. He's walking the distance, it's dark, the lights are kind of down. What is he wearing? What colors is gators? What's all this? You have to kind of piece it together and maybe make some educated guesses. And so that's kind of what I was doing. I don't mind, this only cost me like $5, I think, for all of this. Maybe this will come in useful later on if I decide to maybe adjust the costume a little bit. But right now I have extra that I won't be using. This one seems to be better. Um, so I'm looking forward to building these gators. I was able to find a pattern on Pinterest that looked really good. Uh, I look for B-wing pilots, A-wing pilots. A lot of the pilots still wear these type of gators. Uh, not everyone though. I think mean, Blue Squadron pilots have a different type of gator, but um, you'll find some cool gators and uh, how to build them. And it's a very simple design, which we'll get to another video. So there you go. Not much to report. I just wanted to kind of update you on my gear, update you on the things I purchased, show off a cool sweater from the Mandalorian, <laughs> and some trinkets. I can't forget the coin. I got a gold Leia coin, challenge coin. That's pretty sweet. Eh? And a patch to match. So thank you for tuning in. Like I said, short video. Um, follow the links below to Overseas Fabrics, Panda Props, Outer Rim Rookie, Rebel Legion, all that stuff, it's all below. Thank you for liking, subscribing if you haven't done so yet. I really appreciate it. It helps spread the word and helps others get involved in this wonderful hobby of cosplaying, building the costumes, joining the 501st, joining the Rebel Legion, joining the Mando Mercs, joining Droid Builders, do, do what you love especially in these times, it's been tough. I can hope, I hope, I hope I can get back out there and troop again. I miss everybody out there. I miss my friends, the 501st. And uh, I wish you all the best. Stay safe. That being said, have a good one. And we'll talk to you later. And remember, co-pilots are built on hope. Bye.